So this video is about my walk from Belfast to Perigo. Uh, basically a downer across Northern Ireland and into Donegal. I started off about 6am heading down some nice easy footpath roads. So I was able to listen to music and just get lost in my own thoughts and this was a nice stretch. Where would I get metal for my metal breast? Why Tata Steel of course. Lisburn. After Lisburn, the nice roads continued and I got some good miles in. This bench in Maryland was uh, great. My first proper sit down stop. After resting the feet and cursing the chippy for not being open, I marched on to my sister's house in Dollingstown uh, where I got some snacks, a cup of tea, and some first aid, which really helped me out later on. Teddy, there, a somewhat lazy dog, which definitely wouldn't have enjoyed joining me on the journey. Then I entered my hometown of Lurgan, uh, only briefly travelling through to exit via the Guilford Road. Here I took some time to do some proper walking shots. Look at that professionalism. Of course the drivers going past must have been thinking, what is that weirdo doing? And if so, they should never watch any of my other videos. Cows and crows, crows and cows. I'd think of a rhyme, but I don't know how. Two outdoor roadside punch bags, mighty. I gave one a slap and continued on. Then I entered the metropolis of Bleary. I knew I had to keep my wits about me. Gangland violence, vicious muggings, and drug-related kidnappings are just a few of the things that people can read about in the Bleary Parish Book Club, I imagine. I was kindly given free water and cookies at a wee ice cream and snack place, which were very much appreciated, thank you. Then I went on and stopped at the country house slash cattery stroke farmland of some friends. I had tea and biscuits with some interesting company, so I was well fed that day. The Newry towpath was my next destination, and as I dandered along I started to think about settling down for the night. I had a spot in mind, but would I be disturbed by rowdy put down ruffians, hopped up on dragon soup and summertime energy? Would I bump into another outdoor sleeper? and awkwardly have to back off, like when you open a public toilet cubicle and someone's already in there made dumb. No, neither of those things happened. I had a wee fire, cooked up some grub, and found a nice spot for my sleeping bag and bivvy. I say bivvy, I had actually forgotten my proper bivvy bag, so I was sleeping in some like bright orange, life-saving sack. But hey ho, it was a nice sleep anyway. The next morning, I exited the towpath, walked through Portadown and onto the Moy Road. Much of this I didn't film because it was very busy and had no footpaths and I was shitting myself. So I just took the music out, concentrated on staying alive and hugging the verge. On less busy parts I took in the Orchard County of Armagh. Then I started getting onto more wee country lanes. I like these. I started to notice much more than I would have being a passenger in a car or a bus. Walking is mighty. Don't be a lazy bastard. Do it more. There you go, preaching done. I don't seem to have taken much footage in and around Duncanon, uh, but I got talking to the helpful landlord of the Gasworks pub, and he helped me find a place to stay that night, which was the home of Mike and Sheila. But first I had a few pints and Chinese food from across the road, which I was allowed to take inside. Brilliant pub, great people. At Mike and Sheila's we exchanged adventure and misadventure stories. After picking up supplies, I headed off again towards Oma. The roads got hilly. Castle Coffee. I went along some more mighty wee back roads and country lanes. Then I got into awesome countryside. No one was nearby for miles and I think three out of the four cars that did go by stopped to chat. I think they were just surprised to see someone walk along those roads with a big rucksack. Then I had a nice meal at the Whistler's Inn in Castle Caulfield. Delish! I didn't feel like bothering another landlord or locals that night, so I just found a nice bit of wooded land before Oma crept in and uh, set up my wonderful sleeping arrangement. After picking up all my rubbish, of course, I set off again the next day, through Oma and onto one of the longest seaming stretches, the long straight to Lack. 
I didn't film any of it because it was once again a very busy road. Also, I already looked like a bit of a nutter walking along it, uh, speaking to myself, shouting David Goggins quotes. As I trudged on, I dreamt of a nice stop on some munch and lack. Oh, how great it would be! Delicious food, some rest, maybe a beer. There was no shop in lack. Uh, it's pub Fort Knox wasn't open, and so it was fittingly hard to get into. This is where I was grateful for being alone. If I had had uh, friends with me, this is where they would have started yapping uh, with that disappointment and characters would have crumbled. As I had no one to yap to, I just had to keep walking the next three miles to Eterney. Or Eterney. How do you pronounce it? I went into the bar on the corner and the nice barmaid there gave me a free pint when I uh, explained my journey, so that's always great. At Eterney, a friend of a friend picked me up and brought me to her for my home, which included a garage turned pub that was decked out like the Wild West and was amazing. The next day I was kind of dropped back off in Eterney so no one could say I was cheated. From there I hobbled along, happy but in pain, to Kesh. I was tempted to stop for a while in Kesh, but I thought, nah, you've come this far just push till the end. I did in fact have a few wee stops along the road after Kesh where I might have been going a wee bit daft. Let's hit the road baby hit the road with all your bust blisters in your toes. But it was great to see the beautiful Fermanagh countryside you don't really see when just driving by. And then I saw, I saw my destination and made my way across the bridge and into Pettigo, County Donegal. I had accomplished my goal. Nice. Good munch, I sleep on a bench by the river, and a pint, when Britain's pub opened at five, were very much appreciated. Quite the adventure indeed.